Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast. It's a weekly podcast where we sometimes have a therapy session and we sometimes think about big ideas. Sometimes we talk about things that are happening. Usually, we're just trying to see how to make the world a better place for us and all of the other people that aren't twats. <laughs> My name is Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. So what are we talking about this week? This week, we're going to be talking about buying less. And maybe working less as well. Yes, working less and buying less and just having a bit more space in our lives. Maybe all the things that those ad- all the world is telling you that are gonna that you need to be doing aren't right. Maybe they've got their own reasons for doing that that aren't necessarily right for you. So we're going to talk about some ways that we have stopped buying as much or stopped working as much or certainly changed the focus of I don't know that I've stopped working as much I've just changed the focus of where I put my energies uh, have the privilege to do so sometimes and we're both in that we both work four days a week generally right yeah. yes. and um, Fridays we do our podcast and we do other things and you know sometimes so yeah we're going to talk a bit about that um, so there we go yeah yeah, yeah. See what exactly, you think. Exactly. <laughs> See what you think. Before anything else, what what's on your mind, Ivanka? Um, Where are you coming from right now? Where am I coming from right now? Uh, I'm still... So let me think where I am. My shoulder's sore. That's really beginning to irritate me. I think it's mostly to do with holding my phone, my right hand. How much do you hold your phone? I don't know. But it's when I... Just from in normal... I thought you meant like to your ear then, but then you just demonstrated it and it was just like looking at it. Is it what what kind of phone is it? Well, maybe that hurts. Is it heavy? Yeah, it's really heavy. I can't handle it. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my... But, but it sort of cramps up and then it makes it very hard to be on a computer. Um, the other things I'm thinking about is I need to grade my students. Um, and I I always take it... Obviously, I take it quite seriously because the grades we give people are at universities quite a... You know, it's a big deal, grades you get. Um, mm. So I need to have a little think about... I go through the, obviously there's marking criteria, but I like to do a bit of analysis um, Mm. and let it sit for a bit before I do that. So I've got to do that this weekend. And um, it was interesting. One thing that was interesting and I discussed with the proper academic lecturer that teaches the course alongside me. uh, And he and I were talking about a lot of the ideas were quite self-centred. Even though right. I'd given them this a very broad brief of doing good in the world, hmm. a lot of the ideas that were put in front of me were about um, were about themselves. <laughs> Is it, it possible to go into like, any more detail? On that? So it's more like, how do I help myself get fitter? Right, right, right. Okay, and so I was self like, improvement. So self improvement, which okay. Oh, self-improvement generally, you know, that's a good thing. Um, mm. That still, I think that still broadly hits the category. But when I when I had when I discussed it with them, it was more we were talking more about impact in the world. And I suppose you have to start with yourself, and you are at university, and you are eighteen, mm. nineteen, whatever. So therefore, you you are a very important person at that time mm. in your life. Um, there was a couple of ideas that I thought were really uh, really nice. One guy had done quite a lot of work. Um, with this idea of, you know, when you go into a shop, you could scan a an item and then it would give you the um, alternative one that had maybe... He started off... It's very hard to judge a product. If you put two products side by side, why is this mm. one better than the other? That's actually yeah. very hard. But he said... So in the end, he just... For the purpose... It's a short... It's quite a light touch project. But he concluded that you could give the brand a... a, a, a a score the the manufacturer but the problem was in his in the student world it's like often the less uh environmentally impactful product is a lot more expensive and if you're living Mm. on a student budget how do you how do you justify spending i don't know 
fifty percent more on something just because it's yeah. going to be kind to the environment. So he'd had some ideas about the grown ups could maybe pay forward <laughs> to cover another the- reason for another reason for everyone getting paid the same regardless of age. <laughs> Exactly. Well, yeah, okay. Because last time, didn't we say that she, I was a bit reluctant to give graduates the same money? I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but yes, that is another reason. And also a reason why manufacturing, you know, like, really, I think we've just got to move to a situation where you can't buy bad things. That make it much easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, if it's bad for the world, it can't be produced. Um, so yes, I, but I enjoyed it. I, it's kind of, I was so tired yesterday though after they'd done all their presentations because I really, 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 really had to listen. Mm. <laughs> it's like two hours of a sort of a you know these people's end of term project. So you know you can't you can't take it. Your responsibility. Well, I, I couldn't possibly take my responsibilities lightly. So I spent the rest of the afternoon slightly vegetative. <laughs> That's me. How are you, Michael? Okay, sounds sounds good. Uh, I watched um, the Lady Gaga Bradley Cooper film uh, A Star Is Born last oh, yeah. weekend, and I always I always sort of shy away from these sort of music biopics, partly because sometimes they're just stupid, but also because it just gets so much stuff going and like regrets and oh maybe I could do this and just all these kind of thoughts, but um, and a long term uh, conundrum I've been having was kind of like crystallized while watching that which was um sort of um bradley cooper saying to lady gaga's character you know a lot of people have talent but not many people have something to say Mm. you gotta have something to say and i thought yeah and this has been the crux of i'm like what what do i I, i've been figuring out how to say things for decades (laughs) how to kind of do all the possible things you might want to do but I've never been quite like what I say has always been a bit of a kind of an afterthought it's just whatever is happening that day and but I have been thinking recently like, what is the what is the value what do I have to say I'm not I don't have I'm white white male privilege I've my my life is has is the default <laughs> like the sort of white I'm not from somewhere in you know downtrodden or interesting or offering some perspective that no no one's ever heard before so what you know what is what am i possibly offering to the world of music or that sort of thing um and i thought you know what it is it's this um it's this dealing with loss thing it's this um mm. it's how how have i got from <sighs> semi catatonic childhood um through to sort of like just you know all the stuff that's gone through that I know loads of other people have but I've actually kind of resolved a lot of it and that is something that if I can express some of that through through the songs that I'm writing then that's some value that I can offer I'm I'm glad you've identified that because I was going to say because I I think you uh it's good that you talk about white male privilege, but <laughs> you have got a a bit of a go past go and collect two hundred pounds card. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, and, and, and you know, so watching all these, watching all the drag race stuff, watching all the, the like, you um, it's pop, it's high pop stuff, and I love it. I, I do actually love it, and I think it might be my favourite kind of music. Um, but. They will just on a dime go into, and here is my childhood trauma, like on the stage. And I'm like, okay, well, if they can do that on Drag Race, I can do that when I'm pl- performing. I can say, yeah, Look, I, this is, I lost, I can just hit you with the emotional thing because I know how that feels. And it's, it's kind of, it's kind of good, right? <laughs> Especially if the music is, if it's all about craft and showing something big and sounding great, but that doesn't stop you bringing in this real kind of core of, you know, and just being explicit about it. So I feel like I have permission to do that. I feel like I, I know what the thing is. That, and I think that's when Trump got elected, um, I made that song, um, Exit Planet Earth, because I was, it was, that was the second thing after Brexit. And I was like, I have, and I'd recently seen Louis C.K. before he was just, dis- you know, <laughs> before we went out to Before like he was him disqualified. Anymore. 
<laughs> talking about, and I don't think this is necessarily right, but talking about if you elect Hillary, because a lot of people were like, oh, we're not sure about Hillary. And he came out and said, look, vote for Hillary, because what America needs right now is a mother. I don't think we should be defining her by her gender. But I felt, I thought, I came to this idea, this concept that America has just lost their mother, lost a mother and instead got this absolute piece of shit instead. And that is something I can talk about, losing a mother. So that was the that was the core of the song that I wrote. And that was... I've been putting stuff up on Facebook for years, but that was a song that random relatives were sharing around. <laughs> random <laughs> people that I hadn't heard from for ages. That I didn't expect... I just thought no one was seeing anything I was putting up, but... Whatever, for whatever reason, that that was one that did connect to people, and um, and I think now I maybe understand why, and maybe I've got some more like that. And although I have kind of released an EP before that, where I did kind of double down on a bit of that, it's all very vague. It's all very kind of like you don't. I'm, it's so abstract that it's sort of like you know you don't really know what it is. And I think I can be a bit more specific about it now. So. Michael, maybe uh, I mean, you can keep this in or not, but mm. I. Maybe there's a, I might be too corny, you can mm. shut me up, but like there is this Mother Earth thing <laughs> that oh people Lord. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Earth. Why are you always trying to kind of push Why are you always trying to make it all about climate change? <laughs> Why are you always pushing your always agenda? Just constantly going on about fucking climate breakdown. Right <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but maybe well, there's something that you could, like, you know, I, I really don't know how to, because, so, so stepping, stepping back from that for one second, I, mm. I have that same, you know, when I go to conferences or professional conferences and thing and I, people stand up and talk and, and there's a lot, I don't really go to UX conferences anymore. I haven't for years because you just sit there and you yeah. go. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> did I need to come and listen to you? I'm glad that you're really willing to go out there and promote yourself. Good on you. Yeah. Why don't I do that? What's right? Do I? Is it because yeah. I don't have anything to say, or is it because I don't want to say it, or is it what is it? Mm. Uh, am I not comfortable in that medium? I think I do like the podcast as a medium as well. I'm very happy yeah. here talking, not being looked at, not having I mean, to check my spelling, <laughs> check my sentence structures. <laughs> Are they short enough? Is it pithy? Uh, whatever. Um, but I think. Uh, I think that idea of understanding what you have to add to the world is a re that's self actualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally, connect that's all connected. It's all connected. And all it's connected. Like, what, what, what am I gonna? Have? What am I bringing to the table? Because it's got to be <laughs> so, something. Because people don't want to listen to something they've heard before. No. Even if it sounds like this. I figured out how to get a new thing to do that today, and that's quite oh, fun, isn't it? Oh, that's brilliant. I'm not, I don't really use it very much, but it's nice to know I've got it there. Twist of a knob. <laughs> I used to work with somebody who wrote code to music at approximately that speed. And I'd be like, <laughs> how are you not? It's stressing me out just sitting next to you. <laughs> I'm not even trying to think. Um, good. Well, anyway, here's the song that I was just going on about, and then we'll <laughs> get yeah, into Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I know how it feels to be betrayed To have your future torn
how are we going to do this then? Working less, well, buying less, let's say. What, what we've, we've covered it, I think we've talked about it a couple of times where we've said one way to buy less is to buy better. Yeah. Better. That was a bit of an Alan Partridge uh, intonation there. <laughs> one way is to buy better. Buy better. Um, well, I think it's a, uh, yeah, we have talked about buying better. We've talked about repairing things. All the usual suspects. Repair. Repair is a big the deal. The world is very much against us when it comes to repair and buying better, isn't it? It is, especially in tech. The repairing in tech is not really fashionable. No. Mm, no, and and I think that's that's my theory is the thing that's going to push Apple out, I think, or the thing, next thing, that the next revolution in phones and that sort of thing has got to be repairability. Well, it's that, yeah. Because it's just, it can't be sustained. This this is not sustainable. They're, and they're not even better phones anymore. They're just sort of like slightly different phones now. Yeah. Um, and we're just on this kind of redundancy cycle, this kind of like obsolescence cycle. Um, and we need the next revolution has got to be whoever figures out how to make it make that not the thing maybe maybe the um maybe carrot coin companies will start to do this start exactly. to profit the, from doing the this fair there'll be another fairphone type model that is kind of got the modular got the you know the 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 i don't know at what point we started welding the batteries into the phones because in mm. the in the beginning, in the beginning, phones were created with removable batteries. <laughs> it's yeah. like a, well, Apple will tell you it's. <sighs> Apple will insist that it is big for the aesthetic, the design aesthetic, and to make it the thinnest phone ever, and all this shit. But also, I think they're they've been anti repairability, anti. I think the trouble is the more moving parts you have the more can go wrong and they kind of want to foster this brand that it just works and batteries are probably a source of a lot of problems but even they say you know on the apple website you'll see like batteries are a consumable and at a certain point it needs to be replaced um but the fact that you have to sort of like pull off glued down stuff now and use some random weird non-standard screwdriver and all the the whole thing is this one assembly which sure has its benefits but for a long time, you know, we've said it before, like, I don't need a thinner phone anymore. I didn't no. really want a bigger phone, to be honest. I was fine. Like, <laughs> you didn't need to make it bigger. Now you force me to have this phone that I can't quite reach the other side of the screen with my thumb and, unless I spend another 300 quid for the next one up that's slightly thinner, <laughs> well, I, slightly narrower. I was, uh, do you remember I came up with that, um, I was going to start a YouTube channel called Mummy Men's. Yes. Um, but, you know, but I uh, then, so I read an article this morning, in fact, coincidentally, which is about mm. something like mummy fixes it or something. It's not quite as, right. uh, as it doesn't <laughs> roll off the tongue quite as well it's as my version. It's not an alliteration, but she was... Um, uh, but yeah, but she. This is a woman in in America who's basic, basically repairs iPhones from home, mm. and puts stuff on YouTube of how to do it, and has got other mums doing it. Um, but but yes, so technology technology is a big the the need to mend things, and people bang on about this circular economy business. That sort of can it be used for something else? Can it be repaired? Can it mm. be upgraded? All that jazz. Uh, that is an important yeah. part of it. But I think on a, on a personal level, though, the thing that you said that has the biggest impact on a person's life is that I'm fine. What I have is fine. There is nothing wrong with the thing that I have. That's the bit that sort of understand, like, you know, to if you buy less, you can work less because you need less money. It's mm. like, you know, r buying new clothes because... I fancy it. But I'm a very fashionable person. It's very much a part of my identity that I'm always wearing the latest fashions. Well, I think then you need to work on some other... Why not learn how to customise your clothes a little bit? Add a little Ooh. twist to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Get a sewing machine. <laughs> Get a sewing machine. Learn how to use the sewing machine. Yeah. It's, That's it's, our advice to you fashionistas. Hard. Yeah, do some... Get some clothes paint and... Write some slogans on them or something. I don't know. Some patterns. And, like, you know, reuse some of that fabric. Take exactly. it in. Let it out. Imagine. Or just Add take some it patches. to someone that knows how to do it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
those kind of, but that's kind of a but I think fundamentally though deciding that you know the fir- like the first step to working less is definitely just spending less buying less and I've had a couple of personally had a couple of strong triggers that have driven me in that time you know one was um the obviously I did not have a lot of money when I was a kid so I did make a lot of my own clothes or do that thing where I sort of got my dad's old shirts and did things to them to make them more mine my Mm. identity as a 14 13 14 15 year old was entirely created around modifying clothes that I could Mm. nick off my parents (laughs) because that was what that was Uh, which you know I think didn't do me any any harm Um, but then you know going on that motorbike trip had a big impact um, for me and Nick and how we choose to do things because first there was saving up to do it Hmm. which I realized that if I stopped by you know like I realized that every time I got to Victoria because I was commuting every day I'd buy a coffee and probably a bottle of water and then maybe a cake and it'd be a tenner before I'd even like started my day so it's those kind of like and you start realizing how quickly that has an impact um yeah and they're just and, and you um you do find that the more you're working the more of your time is taken up with work the more you'll just buy yeah. your way to you know you'll to buy happiness. you'll solve problems you'll buy the you'll, but not even that like you'll get the taxi somewhere you'll you, you yeah. the more money you're making the more you'll spend just because you're like oh, i've just got to get from here to there and i'm working till seven and i've got to get there and okay i'm just going to pay for the taxi or or like i'm going to buy lunch from the in a box from a overpriced you know i'm going to go to whole foods every day for lunch instead of because i've got time to make my packed lunch because i'm working too hard yeah like a lot of those costs are a symptom of working a lot um yeah. and if you you'll find that as as you have more time you can there is pleasure in preparing your own food there is i love the i love the image of you making your own or like customizing your own clothes like making your own you know it goes from like at the moment i'm in a working hard phase with my modular synths but when i wasn't working i was building my own stuff a lot more so it's like there's there's um time money trade-off and i think um you sometimes it's just feels a lot better to make something yourself that's yours and then sort of buy a thing that costs loads of money, but then you're, the work that you're, you're kind of having to work on something else to get the thing that you want. But what if you could just directly work on the thing that you want and have that? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? You know, in the feudal times, you had to work enough to be able to eat get a few things and then you just didn't need to do any more work and why and that wasn't all that much work altogether and sometimes you could just have a year off because you were fine and like what what why what happened to that and why can't we have a bit more of that and some of that is is the um sorry gone no no but i think that's it's being created there's this there is this consumerist creation of um uh like oh we need to change our kitchen why what's wrong with your kitchen Mm. oh well um well you know it's it's quite old yeah but does it work um well yes it does but you know i've really gone off those handles on the cupboards we'll buy some more handles you don't need to change Mm. your kitchen she's gone off you know like the the but the it's those that kind of thinking that it's normal and necessary to constantly change your environment i mean painting a wall is not particularly destructive expensive or 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 taxing on the environment but you know a new sofa because you've gone off your old one or um or i don't know a new just changing things for the sake of changing things is one of the things i find a bit of a peculiar preoccupation of ours Mm. in its clothes house car what's wrong with your car oh, well. well here's the thing is it's <laughs> like so we live in this world that's dominated by the interests of marketeers by marketers by companies that want to sell you stuff so obviously if you lack imagination the first thing you're going to go to is <laughs> the ideas being presented to you in, in every direction that you look which are a new thing that is different to the thing you have now that's just the way it goes and all and the com and i think one of the 
worse the the other effects that we don't think about so much of all this the advertising industry is it's also there's the stigma against doing stuff yourself and kind of bootstrapping your things and not changing something for a while and not having the latest thing like there's this whole kind of aggressive stigma and then i find it and that's something that we could we could address um and then then this irony that now you then you have this sort of like the most expensive stuff now is like the artisan handmade stuff it's like well you could just learn to make an artisan thing and <laughs> yeah, cut out yeah, the middleman yeah, yeah. like yeah. And it would cost <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah yeah you can learn how to make a handmade leather handbag you don't yeah, need to get yeah, some yeah, leather yeah. that's doable you, know, you might need to get a sewing yeah. machine you can probably manage you know maybe if you you know get some things that let you make things i think that's yeah, a good yeah, thing yeah. that's that's what a lot of my money goes on things to let me make things too many oh. things to let me make no i don't know i need all of them i don't care <laughs> i need I think, them all i think part of the uh the problem there as well is these kind of like tv i saw someone tweet about this recently that sort of the tv house doesn't match the living standard of the people who supposedly live in it you know, you just look right. at it and you think, how the fuck on your job can you be affording to live in a house that looks like this where it is? No way. And then, and then so, and it just yeah. creates this sort of like, first of all, oh, I'd love that. Isn't that a beautiful house? I'd love if my house looked like I love it. Oh, I mean, mm. and then you start and then it makes you just it's sitting there, which is why And we'll give Beth Bell a shout out, which I did on Facebook the other day. She has this f company she started called Green Product Placement. Mm -hmm. So she saw because she's part of, you know, the set design crew for TV shows. She started this company that helps promote ethical products into TV sets so that right. instead of yep. people walking around with a Starbucks coffee cup, they're walking mm. around with a reusable bamboo toothbrush or something. I don't know. But it's yep. that sort of idea. It's like instead of planting this all this desire for tat in our hearts, if mm. these people have a responsibility to have a TV set that actually matches the earnings of the people living on it, that's what I think. It does make you feel better to be surrounded by... Nice things. Nice design yeah. and like a kind but of have... But there's still a lot of that you can do from, I mean, we, we in our neighbourhood, people leave unwanted furniture outside their houses and go, there's a chair outside of number 33, if anyone wants it. It's like a free goal without any effort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Nick and I are quite adept at picking up. We're champion bin divers. Um, and there's, it's amazing what you can do with a bit of paint and uh, mm. some, you know, fancy chalk paste paint bit of furniture distressing so a lot of our, our house is like a mixture of random finds that evolve over time and then when you're done mm. with them you can just put them back out into the world and other people can have them that's how mm. i that's part of my circular economy life okay <laughs> upcycling find redump yeah. um do you know this is um you i go to sharon's parents and they um they've had the same sort of decor like the house the flat's been the same since the 70s but they got in an architect and i think they spent a fair bit of money on and it's the whole floor of one of these sort of milan sort of um, apartments so it's like four bedrooms like but the way it's laid out is quite um it's it's open plan kind of but it's quite it's got lots of nooks and crannies and corners and cozy areas and um and then it sort of sharon told me yeah at the time though it was one of the first sort of open plan spaces um and that because and i think like now if you did it the only thing that i think would be different if you did it now apart from and there's quite a lot of dark colors and it sort of feels quite sort of there's a lot of greenery and like all this stuff everywhere but i mean it, it still works and it's because it was done to this really you know they've never had to repair yeah, half yeah, of the yeah. employment and they just had, had it done to a really high standard and it's just worked for it's been good for decades yeah and i think but i think one of the things about buying well and buying is you've also got to sort of be a bit forward looking. You've got to maybe get something that's a little bit out of your current comfort zone. 
because it, it I mean whether or not you think that something starting to look dated has meaning or value or not but if you if you are worried about that then you probably want to kind of try and look ahead a bit so that it's going to last a long time even if it's not what everyone's got right now so maybe that's another way of buying less is to sort of look at what the innovation is at the moment and kind of like go to where the ball's going rather than where the ball is now and then you won't have to buy another one like straight away well i mean i think i think that's part though a lot of that longevity or it's still looking good even though it's slightly dated is Mm. to do with quality like is it made from really good you know like is it was it well and did you really like it when you bought it because if you really Mm. liked it when you bought it as a as a grown up human, I mean, I, what I bought when I was sixteen and what I'd buy now are probably very different. But you know, like, I think understanding that just something is uh, that's one of the advantages of bin diving. So you don't have to live with it forever. <laughs> but <laughs> but you, but it, what I do buy, like I do buy, though I found I did had a great find at the charity shop recently. A load of Le Creuset pans. Okay. Highly reduced. What well, one of them would have been two hundred pounds. I paid twenty for it, so I was delighted with that. But those kind of like really quality items, they, you know, yeah, there are slight variations in trend and color, um, but they're still good, yeah, and they yeah, still yeah. look good. As something that was high quality in the seventies in Milan, in you know, like if you paid somebody to come and really do it properly, it's still going to look good today. Yeah, Surely to does. goodness. So I'd like to go and visit um, Sharon's parents now. <laughs> okay, well... Uh... So if you could wangle me an invite, I'll get the ferry over from Split to somewhere. Ancona, I think, and then a train up. I reckon that's doable. All right, all right. <laughs> I've um, even planned my journey. What... Okay. Is this making you uncomfortable? We, um... Well, we're going to come and visit you. Do you, you not then. want to? Invite me? When yeah, are we, sure, when no are we invited? Any, to any some, time. See some of this. Just come. As long as we don't fly. As long as you don't How fly. How far is it from Milan to. Well, the where problem you are? is Milan, you have to. I mean, it's a day's drive. You can do Milan to split. Uh, there must be trains. So you can definitely get. So you have to go up Croatia and left to Milan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We looked into how long the trains from London to Milan are. Um, it is 10 hours but I think it's maybe doable sounds nice you love that shit but you know some <laughs> of us we like sitting in an airport for hours on end and then exactly. trying to get a taxi or whatever. and then um, occasionally being stuck on the car- tarmac for another hour and then getting the other end yeah. and then waiting for your bag and, oh god and it's a, wonderful. instead of just getting on a train and arriving at your destination, having had a lovely sit, not not dehydrated terribly because you haven't been up in the air. Um, your skin's fine. There's no flakiness. Um, you know. Okay, so, um, buying so how have you? How have we got to the situation where we can work four days a week? Is it literally just age? I think some of it is age. Some of it is the mm. fact that, like, you know, Nick had already bought a house, then I married him, <laughs> saved me having <laughs> to buy a house. Um, so that is a factor. I think, so yes, there is, there is an element of it is that. I think... That said, not everyone that's our age is doing what we're doing by any stretch of the imagination. So there is definitely a priorities factor to this. Yeah. And actually, when I think about it, when I was 20, in my early 20s, I was working three days a week because I wanted to work on my music. Well, I, when I worked three days a week, I sort of, as I, in my late 20s, because I was doing a master's two days a week. It can be done, but it depends whether it is priorities. What mm. do you, you know, like, what, what do you care about most? I suppose, like, if people if, if people did want to work less, what can we warn them about? Like, I think some of the problems... Sometimes um, when you are not in the whole week and everyone at the company, everything's super urgent and it's, oh, my God, there's a crisis and, oh, we've got to deliver this by blah, blah, blah. And if you're not sort of, like, there the whole time, then 
you can sort of see why they'd want someone that was there the whole time. Um, and then I don't know how that yeah fits into sort of you know, but a lot of people, a lot of parents, will want to work part time as well. So it's it's sort of maybe it's it's business that needs to just. I think for me, I think it's this idea that because I remember before I worked part time, before I had children, before I there was somebody where I worked who was in the management team and she only worked mm. four days a week. And I was like, well, she's clearly not committed enough to her job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was that person. I was like, well, how could you possibly expect to be really senior? And did it. And the re. So there's that thing about how how much you're worried about how people are perceiving you and how much is that your problem and how much is it their problem. Mm -hmm. uh, that there's this idea that just because you're working part time doesn't mean that you are not as up on it. I mean, part time is sort of a derogatory term, isn't it? When you like, yeah, you're so part. It's it's not a it's not a good brand, is it? Part no, that's true. It's not part time. But it's only like part time. I'm only working part of my time on this thing that you're banging on about, your biggest problem mm. in the world. Um, I found personally going from five days to four days was really quite straightforward because all that mm. happened was that my four days became really efficient. So right. when people invite you to a meeting just because they think you may be interested or it may be useful mm -hmm. to have you, it's like, I don't go to those meetings anymore. That is a waste of mm. my precious four days because you're still kind of doing an efficient five days work. Yeah. Where I think yeah, I yeah, found, yeah. Like, where I found it much harder is when I moved to three. Yeah, and I, I would echo that. Like three, I've, two I found really hard. Like I think the hardest... But yeah, three was yeah, three, three is harder because you're away for longer. And then two, I would say that the re the effects of it takes you a while to get your head back into it. And then by the time your head's into it, you're kind of like off it again. Makes it you feel really really unproductive. Um, th yeah, three is still on that spectrum. So I think yeah. four is yeah pretty good for. I, th I think if you've got any sort of responsibility, like three is very easy. I found if I'm the user researcher. Or the, mm. I've got a very defined role with no particular um, additional responsibility. So it's very clear, right, your job is to do this bit. That's it. And I did have to have a word with myself. You know, it's like, right, you're not going to be able to influence all these other things because you're not part of that conversation anymore. You're, you're just doing this thing. I think and I had I did manage that digital marketplace service manager role. I did that three days a week and I found it very difficult it was very hard to fit it into three days so on my fourth day at home I would spend the morning clearing my emails mm. kind of as not okay. you know because there just wasn't enough time to give everything the attention it needed in three days and be on top mm. of all the admin bits but the payoffs are quite good <laughs> the payoffs are quite good <laughs> well, it's all, I was going to say like in on. terms of what's what 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 do you think so I've 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 done I've tried them all. I've tried two days, three days, four days, five days, and also short gaps, long gaps, you know, between contracts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they all have their merits and problems. <laughs> yeah, well, I think what I tend to do now, more apart from like that, that seven week, three days a week in London project that I did at the beginning of the year, is I tend to do days. So I do right, a day of well. this and then I do two days of that. And then that local local government thing was just, you know, they bought 20 days to use over three months. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. then and then I, the rest of my time, I, 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 I can flip and swap. Like, so I do something for Restaurants Brighton. We're launching Restaurants Brighton jobs. Uh, so I quite I, I f I'm feeling much more comfortable. The hardest thing for me, and I totally freaked out last summer about this. And I had a massive like chose to remedy my freak out by shouting at my husband randomly about something. That's <laughs> like you don't know. It's like it's because so much of my identity, and this is all about identity. I think the buying, mm. the working. Who do I think I am, and how mm. do I think I'm projecting onto the world? And I was like, but without work. Who am I? How much, yeah. so much of my identity is tied up in being some sort of a professional that then spending, like I did last summer, you know, six weeks in Croatia, poodling, you know, like 
doing some restaurants Brighton, some podcasts, some this, some that, just didn't feel to me like I was working. In yeah. That, in that, have a job with it. What do you do? Oh, I'm doing a project for the Ministry of, blah, 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 you know, that sort of. Mm. So at that having point. and having taken off well protracted periods of time in the last couple of years, um, it is palpable how how much value you feel in yourself in that sort of professional situation compared to when you're trying to do something for yourself get something new started that you're not necessarily that good at yet or that you just haven't found who's asking you for it it the the difference between like people want caring about what you do suddenly you go into the workplace it's like someone actually cares about what i'm doing every day yeah. and, and it's that is quite that is quite m marked so you start to miss it when you don't have it for a while and you're sort of like but yeah yeah I think it's I think it's all about identity like you know that whole what you said about on the buying but I consider myself a fashionista I consider myself to be a person who has mm. a stylish house I consider myself blah 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 all these things I suppose the assumption is what like what you're doing in that free time if you are just some people I guess just go on holiday yeah of course, like, if that's, that's what you want to my... do <laughs> Do you know, I have this weird thing where I'll, I'll take loads of time for myself and I won't have been getting paid for ages. And then I'll kind of just, I'd be working harder, if anything, when I'm not getting paid. And then I'll kind of start working. I'd be like, I need a holiday. And then someone's going to go, well, you haven't been working for six months. How can you need a holiday? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that is very hard when you're not... Like, you know, job, 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 holiday. I am not, there's very, very little time I have off, off. Yeah. Do you know, like, you know, yeah. it's just, there's always, I mean, Restaurants Brighton means that we're never really off duty because, mm. you know, like there's always, you have to keep, if you've got a business like that, you have to keep an eye on it on a mm. daily basis so i think there's a there's definitely the identity thing and then the giving yourself permission to have time off properly because even yeah. though you only work three days well or like you say you know i've had large chunks of time off but not really yeah well when i go to croatia everyone sort of thinks we're on holiday and i i don't mm. think i'm on holiday i just think i'm in a different house <laughs> do you know what i mean um so i'm not i'm in my Cro i'm in my croatian residence Talk about first world problems. talk about like so we're you know the four day work week all that um is the main thing stopping us having a shorter working week why not three days is it literally the this sort of competitive thing human competitiveness that means that it will always if if we could all agree that we were going to change the work week that would be fine because no one would be like getting ahead by working an extra day of the week or working all the days of the week, which is the current pattern of existence. But why? what would it take to get everyone to realise what we've realised? <laughs> if we all did a three-day three work week, I don't think anything would be different. No, I don't. I think a lot of the time... So the Wellcome Trust is moving to a four-day work week for mm. all of its staff, for everybody. I'm not sure if everyone has to have their day off on the same day. I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, I think that what would ha what would happen is that you everyone the same amount of stuff would get done without all the misery. <laughs> <laughs> the time wasted through misery. And also if less got done, I don't think that would make matter. any difference given no. what most jobs are. Like, Bullshit. Just, we don't need this stuff to be done in the first place so That's let's true. just do less of it i think that would be fine i was just thinking about the whole like if you were literally i don't know chopping carrots in a you know doing something really really practical um 
would it matter that few I don't know fewer breads got baked uh, because you uh, only yeah, worked but you're four talking about day. real jobs. I'm talking about what if <laughs> only <laughs> ninety. The... Oh, what if only eighty percent of all available surfaces when you go down on the tube were covered in adverts instead of a hundred percent? Oh no! <laughs> but, but but even with the bread thing, like if we go back to our, should everyone get paid the same? So if they all got yeah. paid the same as everyone doing the bullshit jobs, so people doing real jobs got paid the same as people doing bullshit jobs. Yeah. The, pe- the only thing that would happen to keep the production of bread the sa- at the same level would mean that the company would make slightly less profit because they'd have to employ more people to cover the four-day week thing. So, which again, um, I don't think no, is because, a massive hardship. No, I don't think... I don't, are we talking about people getting paid the same or are we talking about a four-day work week? Well, both. Because in our, in our real jobs, I, I imagine that in a real job that produces something that we all need. I've chosen bread as my good peasant example of a necessary yeah. thing that you need in your life. Um, a person doing the job, obviously they're not physically baking the bread in a factory, a machine is, but somebody's got to be there to operate it. So let's say that person is now, the, the person is working four days instead of five days. One day's worth of bread's not going to get produced, is it? Well, listen, here's a dream. Here's oh, a dream. On. Here's how Let's I'd end. like to imagine it. I'm ready. What if, if we all agreed to work three days a week, we still need the same amount of real work done, re- bread to be baked. If you, you know, we still need the same amount of actual value to be created. So, would all the people doing stuff that adds no value be incentivized to do? You know, there'd be more jobs as a bread maker. Now, so more people could do a meaningful job and you'd sort of cut out all of the stuff that really isn't adding any value. It's sort of the made up value jobs. That's my dream. You know, you'd still get the same amount of bread made, but more people would get to be a bread maker. I'm sure a lot of people would love to be a bread maker instead of a goddamn marketing consultant. I think that's a good that's a good dream. I like it. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm with you. All right, thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. If you like the podcast, go to www.https <laughs> colon You're forward so slash nerdy. forward slash www.grandpodcast, all one word, dot com. And that will take you to a website with a list of, that takes ages to load now, but the subscribe <laughs> button comes immediately. Um, if you click on subscribe, that'll take you hopefully to the place so that you don't miss any future episodes of this podcast and isn't that what you want never to miss us speaking again isn't it um where can people find you on your own ivanka people can find me at ivanka on twitter on my own handle (laughs) you can find me at michaelforestmusic.com among other places come to my youtube youtube.com forward slash user forward slash michael forest um, if you like the podcast, come and support us on Patreon. Be the first slash second forward slash third. Imagine. Grand podcast. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash grand podcast. Uh, what else? Mm, oh, yeah. Write us some reviews and give us some five stars. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. That's marvellous. See you next time. Bye. 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 The amount to which I need to urinate right now is oppressive. I'm going to press stop. <laughs> <laughs>